In this video, we're going to be answering two important questions. What is crowdfunding and how do I do it? So at this point, if you've been following this series of videos, you'll be up to speed with uh, having an idea, so wanting to make something interesting happen. You'll have a budget and a basic plan for your project. And you'll have worked out who's going to benefit from it, who might be interested, and who might be able to support it in different ways. So now it's a good time to start to answer that question, what is crowdfunding? Putting it really, really simply, it's when a lot of people bring a little bit of money, so pooling small contributions, multiplying that by a lot of people, people from groups with common interests, and adding all of that together to make a large pot, a large pot of money or a project fund. So you might have heard of different successful crowdfunding campaigns from around the world or in the UK where people put up their project, post it online and ask others to get involved. Get involved by pledging money, so pledging a small amount which all adds up to a larger total to make the thing happen. There's a few different types of platform for crowdfunding. The first one is reward based. So this is stuff like Kickstarter, Indiegogo or Crowd Crowdfunder. These are platforms that host those types of reward based campaigns. There's also donation based campaigns. You might recognise some of these like Just Giving. And there's also micro patronage. So that's sites like Patreon. With the different type of crowdfunding platforms, uh, this donation-based one is one where users can make one-off donations to a project that you create. So this might be things like where uh, people are sponsored to do something like a marathon or uh, to contribute to rebuilding a building, something like that. They make a page where people can make these kind of small donations and it, you use it like an online collection jar. So like in the real world, if you were asking people, oh, have you got a pound or two that you could put towards this thing? They're not getting anything specific in return, just a feeling of well-being and, uh, you know, excitement to be able to support a project. It's also a really efficient way to collect in donations for a specific project. So if you just want people uh, to give you a pound or two, to give you a small amount to go towards something, using these type of platforms can be really useful. And another way of collecting in small uh, donations or small amounts of money towards something is this idea of micro patronage. So this has kind of come along where users are making different digital works. So sometimes it might be YouTube videos, it might be uh, online resources for things. It could be also real world events or real world things that are happening. And that's where users make small regular payments to support the things that you create. So you'd create a Patreon page telling people about all the great things that you do and the great things that you make in the world. And then people can pay this type of subscription. So it can be way, a way to collect in this subscription or membership fee. So a small monthly amount uh, that people want to donate to keep you going, keep you making the things that you want to make. It's also a really efficient way to collect regular or ongoing payments. So if you've got a series of events that happen, say you run a club of some type, some type uh, then micro patronage might be a really, really good way to use the crowd to help to support what you're doing. The last of these types of platforms is the one that we're going to look at in the most detail in this video, and that's reward-based crowdfunding. So this is where users pledge money towards a project target in return for rewards. So you might be putting £15 into the project where somebody wants to uh, publish a book and then you would get a copy of that book in return as a reward. So you can use this in a number of different ways to achieve your project's aims and that's what we're going to be looking at in the rest of the video. It's also a really efficient way to collect together larger amounts of money. So we see uh, crowdfunding campaigns uh, really running into the thousands quite often. So it allows you to maybe achieve like a large print run or manufacturing of something that you wouldn't have been able to make just with a few uh, donations or a, or a small part of funding. 
When we're thinking back to the pros and cons of different types of fundraising techniques, we'll remember that crowdfunding is great because it allows you to get products out into the world. So if you're making something, an actual physical item, it allows you to distribute that uh, really worldwide, anywhere that you can post it. It also allows you to get people involved, so it allows you to build a crowd around a project, build excitement about what you're doing. It's really good for projects that are like about a £1,000 and up. And it also allows you to tell your story, so to kind of advertise what you're doing, it gives you a platform to do that. And it's a great way of turning your network, the existing people you know and your social connections, into money to fund your projects. On the downside, it takes quite a lot of effort in terms of planning and preparation, and it also takes time. So the projects themselves run over usually about 28 days to 30, 35 days, so four or five weeks. You have to spend a lot of effort reaching people, so finding uh, people out there in the world who are going to be interested in your project and getting them to pledge, convincing them that your project is the best thing to spend their money on. There's also a lot of competition, so there are many, many, many crowdfunding projects uh, released every day. It's probably going to be about, you know, like hundreds or thousands in the different categories that you're looking at. So it's a very competitive uh, type of project to get involved in or way of funding. And also it can be all or nothing. So on the different platforms, say Kickstarter for example, if you don't reach your full project targets, uh, then you won't get any of the cash. There are different uh, models available, so Indiegogo and Crowdfunder also allow you uh, to take everything that you have raised, but those come with larger fees and can be more expensive to raise money in this way. So when you're starting to think about planning a crowdfunding campaign, you're going to need to look again at your project aims. What is it that you want to make? Is it a product that you want to distribute? Is it something that you could sell tickets for? And is it something that you want to build a community around? Or something that you need to gauge interest or support in? If it does all of these things, if there's going to be a product or something that you could sell tickets for, it's going to be really good fit with crowdfunding, with this reward-based crowdfunding uh, method. You also need to have a look back at your list of stakeholders. So those were all of the people who were going to benefit from your project happening. And think about how they could support your project. So how many of them are there? If there are hundreds of them, this is going to make your project far more viable as a crowdfunding campaign. If it only benefits like 10 to 20 people, that's not going to be enough really uh, to get this going. So you're going to really have to think about how you um, widen that number of people who the project benefits, that, those number of stakeholders. Also think about how much money would each person, each of your stakeholders, spend to receive a reward. So sometimes you might be doing projects where people don't have a lot of cash, they don't have a lot of disposable income. So for them, you know, £5 is going to be a lot of money to give to your project. In other situations, you might be working with people where £500 doesn't seem very much to them and they could easily give that to your crowdfunding campaign. So think about, of your stakeholders and on your stakeholder list, how much money would each person have to be able to spend on your project to receive a reward? Also think about what different groups there are within that. Not all of your stakeholders are going to be exactly the same. Not all of the people who benefit from your project are going to be the same types of people or in the same types of circumstance. And think also about what things in your project and to do with your project will make people want to share and recommend the campaign. So a crowdfunding campaign is really about spreading out as widely as you can to find as many people as possible who are going to get behind this. So you're going to need to think really carefully about how those people are going to share your project, how they're going to recommend it to other people, and how they're really going to get a buzz going about what you're doing. 
So now you've thought about these kind of pros and cons of fundraising and you're looking more carefully at which relevant type to choose. You might also want to watch the next video in the series which is about applying for grants and grant funding.